if you ever meet Virat Kohli, you wouldn't ask him what bat he's using, right? Because his bat is not what makes Virat Kohli Virat Kohli, right? So it's about the technique he uses, not the resources, not the tools. So he hey uses. guys, today is very special and I'm very excited to introduce GRE topper or GRE expert of 2019. Because as far as I know, only handful, like 10 to 15 students are able to get 340 out of 340 in their GRE. But first, I want to share as an international student, it is possible to make passive income in the US on F1 visa, H1B visa. And I'm using Weeble platform for the past two to three months regularly. And I have invested total like $20 every month because I don't have much money to invest at the moment but i'm sure as soon as the market goes up i'll get back refund on that and i have invested in delta mm -hmm. united airlines etc so definitely check it out and you will be given two free stocks if you will click the link in the description below worth up to forty hundred dollars so definitely try it so out. hey guys it's a day and it's a pleasure to welcome the gre topper of 2019 so hi sachin can you please introduce yourself so hi youtube my name is sachin pulil and in 2019 i scored a perfect 340 on my gre and I have been accepted into the master's program at University of Pennsylvania, which is actually the biggest IV. And after I achieved my score, I decided that I wanted to become a digital GRE coach and help other people achieve their dream GRE scores too, so they can get into whatever universities they, they wish to. Wow, so that's so incredible. And how many students get 340 out of 340? You're the only one I've ever seen in my life. Uh, okay, so I think I've heard that it's around 10 to 15 people a year out of the 600,000 test takers around the world. So you are pretty much a GRE expert. So I want to ask you, does 340 out of 340 GRE means a direct admit to MIT, Harvard, Stanford? Uh, well, unfortunately, that's not how it works. So the thing is, if you want to go to MIT, Harvard, Stanford, you know, the, the top five, 10 colleges in the world, then you do need an amazing GRE score. But having an amazing GRE score does not guarantee that you get into MIT, Stanford and Harvard. Because, you know, they look at everything in your application, you know, your undergraduate GPA, your letters of recommendation, and especially your research papers. So they evaluate you on a whole. So I do know people, you know, who are in, are at Stanford currently, you know, they have like high 330s and stuff. And, but they also have an amazing profile. And at the same time, I do know people with like amazing GRE scores who have been rejected by MIT and Stanford and stuff like that. Wow, so how did you make that possible? How many hours you used to study every day and how you tackled so many GRE vocabulary words? So it's contrary to what people might think, you don't need to like devote your life to the GRE and like to get like an amazing score. So I studied for about three, three and a half months for that was my preparation. And I did work full time at the time. So I could not spend too much time during the weekdays. So I'd spend about an hour or maybe a little bit more than that um, towards my GRE preparation. And during the weekends, I'd spend a little bit more time, maybe, you know, three or four hours or maybe even more than that if I was, you know, if it was a good day. And coming to the vocabulary words, so I learned 919 vocabulary words. So it can be more or less depending on like the person's inherent control over the English language. But you don't need to learn like some 3,000, 4,000 words. That's, that's just not necessary. Yeah, but I personally went over 3,500 vocab words for SAT. But that's a different story. But now, <laughs> finally, I would request you to give your top five strategies required to get a perfect GRE score. So I do have like five tips for all your viewers, you know, if, you want, if they want to get an amazing GRE score. And these are just like gener general tips that, you know, everybody can use to get their score. And because I've been coaching students for a while now, I do see some mistakes that they have made. So I want to just, you know, just present them to all of you guys so that, you know, you guys don't make the same mistakes and you can get like your amazing GRE score. The first tip I have for you is don't forget your AWA, right? So the first mistake that students do is that, you know, they just completely neglect the AWA part, which is the essay writing, right? So the AWA is actually the first thing that you see when you go into the examination, right? So if you don't perform well on the AWA, then it's going to set the tone for the rest of your examination. So I have students that, you know, that tell me, you know, that taking the AWA and it's, it's very tiring because you spend like one hour, you know, essay writing and brainstorming and all that stuff. And then only then do you actually get to the parts that you've actually prepared for. So if you've not prepared well for the AWA, then it's definitely going to affect your quant and verbal performance. So don't, don't forget about the AWA. I strongly believe that the AWA is such an important part to achieving a great score that I've like specifically designed one course just to tackle the AWA in my coaching. So tip number two is to build a strong mathematical foundation, right? So this is what sets apart all the 165 plus scores in quant from everybody else. So these top scores will always have like deep, um, will have the concepts embedded in them. And you know, they'll have like a deep understanding. 
they'll be able to apply these concepts um, directly to the questions. They'll know exactly how, how to do everything. So what I suggest is that you build your mathematical foundation. And the good news is that anybody can do it, right? It's not, it doesn't matter if you're, you know, if you think you're too old or you know, if you don't have enough time, it's definitely possible. So, so the way I tell my students is if you think that you're particularly weak in math, or if you think that you're weak in a concept, what you need to do is you need to grab a textbook that is not a GRE textbook, but something that is used in like 10th grade or 11th grade and stuff. Wait, 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 why class 11 and 10 textbook for math? Why not the GRE workbook for math? So the thing is the GRE syllabus is actually quite simple. You know, they only ask high school level mathematics. So the best place to find high school level mathematics is in high school level books, right? And you'll find out that these textbooks go much more in depth to the actual theory of the concepts than GRE Basically. textbooks, right? The GRE oh. textbooks will have maybe one or two pages explaining the theory, explaining the theory, whereas the high school textbooks will have an entire chapter for it. That's why oh. I suggest high school textbooks. So this will help build your foundation from a strong base. And when it comes to the GRE quant, you know, there's a lot of like tactics and stuff that you can use to achieve a better score. So, and I speak about that in my like in my free webinar as part of my coaching. Tip number three is to use SAT RC passages for GRE RC questions. So Harnoor, have you, you said that you took the SAT, right? So how, how was it like for you? What was your experience with it? Oh my God, I cannot share my SAT score at all. It was so bad. That's why I took the ACT. But I can tell you my score was close to 1700 out of 2400. It was really, okay. really bad. I couldn't okay. have gone into any school with that. So, but I got 27 in ACT. <laughs> okay, okay. So yeah, my SAT scores were not great. I got uh, in the 1900s out of 2400. So if you're comparing to like the GRE equivalent, that's around 300 out of 340. Yeah. So from there is how I got my GRE score, right? So the thing is the SAT RC passages are much simpler than GRE RC passages. So mm -hmm. GRE RC, like reading comprehension is a part of the GRE that a lot of students struggle with. And I myself struggled with when I wrote the GRE and I struggled with back then when I took the SAT. So when I prepared for the GRE, I realized that, you know, the RC passages that you see in the SAT are actually simpler. So what you do is you go back to the SAT uh, questions, you know, the RC questions, and then you tackle the RC questions that are simpler than the GRE ones. So this, this helps you, you know, build your RC skills, you know, build your understanding, you know, deal with how much time it takes for you to read a passage, understand how you can learn um, what tone the author is using, what the message the author is trying to put out. So this is like, this is all your RC skills, right? So if you build it from the SAT, and then you move on to the GRE. This gives you like a strong base from which to build your GRE foundation. Tip number four is to identify your personal weak areas. So think of yourself like an athlete, right? So if you're a tennis player, right? And if you have a good, you know, forehand stroke, but your backhand stroke is weak. When you go to a coach, the first thing they do is to tell you to, is to tell you to work on your backhand stroke, right? So similarly, when you're an exam taker, you need to understand what your strong points are, what your weak points are and then focus on those weak areas till they become your strong points, right? And so the question is, how do you identify a weak area, right? So there's two Great. ways, right? The first way is when you write practice sections or you know, you're taking practice tests, whatever area that you score comparatively less in, then that's a weak area for you. And the second more obvious way is if you see a question, right? And it scares you when you, when you try to answer it, then that's obviously a weak area for you. So turn your weak points into your strengths and that'll help you improve your GRE score by a lot. So for me, my, my quant weak area was normal distribution, right? I didn't know enough theory about it. I didn't know the formulas. I didn't know all the tricks and stuff. So I had to like sit down and, you know, just try to study it as much as I can using like textbooks, school textbooks before I moved on to GRE textbooks and, you know, um, and before I wrote the examination. So everyone will have their own weak areas. Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. I also remember when I was preparing for SAT, there were three kinds of reading sections. I was very weak in one kind of that. And then I took the SAT book and practiced all those passages related to that. And then finally I could tackle them. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Now so like, it's, just, it's just like, you know, something that everyone can do. You know, you take your weak area, you practice it till you become amazing at it and you turn it into one of your strengths. So mm -hmm. it's, it's like a trick that works like magic. And speaking of magic, tip number five is don't focus on resources focus on your strategy. So one question I get asked like the most is which resources did you use to study for the examination? Like there's no magic resource that, you know, helped me get my score. Right. So imagine that you are a cricket fan, right? So, you know, let's say, you know, Virat Kohli, right? 
if you ever meet Virat Kohli, you wouldn't ask him what bat he's using, right? Because his bat is not what makes Virat Kohli Virat Kohli, right? So it's about the technique he uses, not the resources, not the tools he's using. Now, I'm not saying that I'm Virat Kohli or anything. The point I'm trying to make is that if you if you want to be great at something, you know, resources will help you get resources will help you a lot. But what really makes you great is your techniques and your strategies that you use. So focus more on the strategy with which you approach your resources rather than the actual resources themselves. So when it comes to strategy, I deal, I deal with the strategy for both GRE and verbal, um, quant and verbal sections in my free webinar as part of my coaching. So the strategies that I have and the ones that I use for my examination, I teach to like everyone who is like a GRE aspirant through my free webinar, six secrets to dominate your GRE preparation. So I hold it, you know, every Thursday and of course it's completely free and I'll put the link on the screen or like maybe you can put it in the description. And you know, if you're interested, you guys can join. So I talk about six secrets to dominate your GRE preparation, which is different from the tips that I gave you guys today, right? So these are like specific secrets that you can put into your preparation and you can see results. And that's it for my five tips. Awesome. Now we have some Q&A questions from our subscribers. The first question we have is how you calculated progress. So how you found out that you are growing every single day? Right. So the thing is, you should not be checking with your growth every single day, right? So I think the best comparison is when you're losing weight, for example, you know, if you're in a weight loss program and it's like a 90 day weight loss program, what they tell you is don't check your weight every day. Right? You need to check from week to week. Similarly, when you're in a 90 day, you know, GRE preparation plan, don't just write a practice section every day and then hope your score goes up by a little bit every day. That's not how it works. So my yeah. suggestion is to check every two weeks or maybe a week if you want to. So then you can see that if you're actually growing. And then the true measure of your you know, growth will be when you do practice sections, right? So if you do a practice section and then you understand where, you, where you're at, and then in between the practice sections, you, know, you go back, you revise, find out your weak areas, you work on them again, and then you write the next practice section. And then that's where you actually measure your growth. Absolutely. I can relate with that because the bicep size also increases gradually. <laughs> exactly. You don't measure every day, right? You measure every few months and then you see if it works. Next question is research paper versus great projects versus great GRE score, which is more important? So obviously if you ask me what's more important, I will give you one answer, but the general answer is you should have everything, right? So whenever you're applying to like one of the top universities and basically when you're, when you're applying to any university, you have to make sure that your profile is great overall. And that is what's going to maximize your chances. But if you know, if you're going to ask me at gunpoint, what is the best, what is the best among these three? I'm going to say research because the better colleges, the, as in the colleges with better ranking, these guys are at the top because of their research. So they want to admit students who are, who have demonstrated that they can research, that they have research skills. And that's how you can get into these colleges, the amazing research papers. Now, what's the best time to take GRE in undergrad? So if you're an undergrad, the best time to take is in your sixth semester. Right? So that's that Jan to July time period. So what you want to do is you want to start studying from the sixth semester onwards and then write it in your summer holidays. Right. So that's the best time to take. I would advise like have like the latest that you should have your GRE score is by like September or October, but you should definitely take it before that, like as much as you can, like as early as you can. It's good. Yep. I definitely agree. Same for SCT. Now another question, I personally have a very low GPA. It's close to 7.3. Does my GRE score, if I get a good score in GRE, can it help me like get accepted if my GPA is very, very bad? So yes, having a great GRE score will definitely help you in your college admissions. If you do have a low undergraduate GPA, the thing is that colleges, you know, like I said, they look at every single part of your application. So if you do have a great GRE score, it'll definitely help offset that low undergraduate GPA. The only thing is make sure that you talk about in your statement of purpose, why your undergraduate GPA is low, right? And then um, the GRE score is what the colleges can use to understand that you are a good student and that you will succeed in their, uh, in their degree program. Yeah, I definitely agree. You can use your letters of recommendation and SOP to cover your flaws. For sure. For sure. And is there a point after which GRE score doesn't matter? It could be maybe like 337 or 340. There's no difference at all. Or like 340 is better than 337. So I would say that, you know, of course, the higher, the better, but above 335, you know, colleges won't really care because the margin of error is, is so small. Maybe like what sets like a 335 student away from a 340 student is about maybe, maybe he got some four questions wrong 
out of the total 80 questions to answer. Absolutely, we have seen cases with students getting score of 322 in their GRE, getting accepted to Stanford, MIT, etc. So mm -hmm. it is definitely possible. So if you have like an amazing application outside of the GRE score, you know, maybe you have like an internship at like NASA or you know, like at ISRO or DRDO. I don't know if you guys have internships at ISRO and stuff, but I'm saying if you have an amazing um, profile otherwise you know maybe you've been to the top college in your country and stuff then having you know having like a good GRE score maybe not a great one but like having in the 320 range is good enough for you to get into a great college provided you know you Absolutely. have the research experience and stuff. so thank you so much Sachin for sharing your valuable information and also make sure to check out his free webinar for six more secrets that he used in his GRE thanks Arno. thanks for this opportunity and make sure you guys follow me on Instagram I do post like frequently free GRE tips that you guys can use in your preparation. Absolutely. Yep. See you. Oh.